Hey everyone, uh, we're going to be going again into new and uncharted territory here for the channel because I'm going to talk about this book I've been reading. Uh, it's called I Contain Multitudes, The Microbes Within Us and a Grander View of Life by Ed Yong. It's his, well, it's nonfiction obviously, and it's a really detailed look at the microbiome that is the bacteria and the viruses and all the like little things that live inside you and around you at the microscopic level. And it's this really fascinating thing because I think only recently we've been like talking about the, the bacterial world that exists around us in at least neutral terms. Because you know for so long we've been the, uh, the target of hand sanitizers and antibacterial soap. And this sort of book kind of takes a more more nuanced look at world bacteria and how they interact with us. You know, for example, certain species and as well as people need certain types of bacteria around them or in their environment in order for our DNA to work like to its full potential. With, without the bacteria, like it works, but it's just something's off about it. There's an offness to it. It doesn't quite work. This sort of explosion of research regarding this topic is sort of all put together wonderfully in this book. And I really have to congratulate the author here for making a subject that really could be terse and really dull, exciting, and fascinating to read it. It's not like a page turner. I'm thoroughly engrossed in it as I'm reading it. It's really well put together and it starts you know, all the way back at the beginning with like, the traditional story of the Dutch man, I can't pronounce his name so I'm not even going to try, looking through a microscope and realizing there's stuff in there at the level we can't see and how the story of bacteria and their, and their relationship with them has changed since their initial discovery. The bacteria of this world and cousins and relatives, they've been here you know, before us, and so we kind of grew up in their world, and so now it seems kind of obvious that there would be a relationship between us and them, considering we grew up in their, in their world, you know? And, you know, sometimes it's harmful, you know, with diseases and whatnot, but it turns out like only a very small fraction of bacteria really in, and stuff really negatively affects people. The rest of it's either, like, doesn't care that we're here, or at least tacitly benefits us. Like there's like there's an interaction going on that is that isn't one hundred percent that isn't one hundred percent negative, you know. Like there's some give and take with all relationships and there's just great anecdotes in here about the animal kingdom and how in some species this relationship is so critical that if you were to say take the bacteria out of these animals, certain animals, they would just, they just die. Because, you know, usually the, the, the cliche look at how evolution is supposed to work, that it's a, it's a competition. It's a race to the top or a race to the bottom. And this sort of, you know, adds that a little bit. No, 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 it, there can be cooperation. Some level of working together between everything in the environment to, uh, to you know, so every, everything in there sort of works out in the end. There's just, you know, there's just, there's just particular one, one that was fascinating in how this works. Uh, yeah, this one bacteria, bacteria is called Wolbachia, and in some species of insects, it's a horrifying parasite. It's a hor horrible, horrible disease that uh, destroys male embryos, and because it or it makes ma males of the species infertile, because it can only reproduce in the female of that species. But and so you know this. This is a horrifying pest, and it can affect up to two-thirds of this particular insect's population, so it's one of the most effective diseases for that species. But for, I believe, it was a species of worm. That exact same strain of Wolbachia is critical for them to mature and grow into adults. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just checking real quick. So, so that's fascinating. So, you know, it's, there, there's, there's no like universal constant for the relationship between the, you know the macrobiome stuff we can see the microbiome stuff we can't all the interactions are happening constantly and that's just really interesting i love when i get to like read something or see something that really sort of changes my perspective on the world and shows how you know, much of a grand design it all is, how, how well it all sort of works and puts together that, you know, like there's good and there's bad, but there's also, there's competition, but there's also working together, it all just works, but carefully, it's so carefully put together, it's, it's amazing how it all just, it's like, like it, sh it shouldn't seem like this happens, you know, it's like at one level it seems counterintuitive that it's, that it all works together when, you know, every, you know, if it's all based on competition. But then, on the other hand, it makes sense, you know, if everyone else is competing, why don't, at least on an evolutionary time scale, which is, you know, long, why don't some animals get together to work for some sort of mutual benefit? They're not, I mean, obviously, you know, bacteria, they're not like soft little kittens. 
they need to be protected and sheltered, scary antibacterial soaps, but you just, you just need to learn more about them. And this book really does an, is an excellent way to learn more about uh, that, that hidden world. That's, it's, been, it's been here all the time, but you just haven't really been paying attention to it. And, and the, the guy that writes it, Ed Young, he's, um, he's a science writer. He writes for The Atlantic, New Yorker, New York Times, all the big publications. And I've read some of his other articles, and he's really great at communicating these big ideas and, and, eject, and injecting this... Oh, it's not quite poetry because his style isn't, you know, very overflowing with descriptions and purple prose, but it's just, there's, it, has this, it just takes it right there, it's like, ah, there's the clarity, there's the, just very good at putting the right words in the right situation, which I guess is the sign of a great writer, uh, compared to me, I would mean, just take a more, uh, eh, it'll just, it's a, their words, just put them all together, it'll be fine, you know, kind of like this. There's, a, there's some, there was another fascinating story that really sprang up, it was about uh, cicadas, uh, in particular, yeah, the 13 periodical cicada it has, has a bacteria in it that once it enters the cicada, it like does a splitting thing, which um, even he had a he had a he had a bit of trouble sort of wrapping around his head around it, you know, and because they, they split into like subspecies, but it's no this bacterial species is no longer itself once it goes inside the cicada and it does the splitting thing, and they've noticed that it gets keeps it splits and some, there's like dozens of variations of these splits, well, whereas it's still uniquely itself that particular bacteria, but it isn't at that point. That's a toughie to sort of wrap to sort of think about, and they're noted that this sort of splitting in the race interaction and the same thing happens with the uh, cicadas at least dna is at the cellular level that there's some there's some big shifts the big concern with that is that if, if these two things this bacteria and the cicada like, become too dependent on the relationship uh like they could be go extinct they could go extinct if there's a big shift in the populations of one or the other so these relationships while in some cases excellent Clearly excellent. In some cases, clearly harmful. Um, that there's no real guarantee in this field in the world of biology. There's always shifts, and any the, the surest path to extinction, at least in the evolutionary sense, is not being able to adapt to changing times in your niche. Some species have done that excellently. A good chunk of those can't, and this and depending and having super strict relationships. Well, that can also be a downfall as well, or they can be a key to success. I'm just going through this book and it's just, oh, there's all these, it's like, oh, there's another thing, there's another thing, there's another thing, it just keeps, just, just like, keeps me, in for one, invested in this, uh, in this field of research. A bit of a caveat, I, I would recommend for reading this, this book does uh, explain its terms pretty well whenever it gets into the specifics. I, I would just recommend just doing a quick brush up on your, uh, your biology before you jump hot head first because there, there's a base level of understanding the book expects you to have. Like it's for general audiences, but like for the general audiences that pay attention in school, that that's sort of that's the best way to describe it. Is uh, even I had to look up some stuff or I had to dig into the footnotes for an explanation. If you didn't, if you don't like looking through footnotes, I recommend sort of reading up on your biology uh, before jumping in. But other than that, if you don't want to do that, there are plenty of excellent. Uh, Footnotes, and anecdotes, and the bibliography is very extensive. So Mr. Young get his research, and it and it shows. You know, obviously this isn't the be all end all of this, but it's just. But like the tagline of the book says, it did uh, give me the a grander view of life. Is more than just this. It's more than just me. I'm, I'm sort of this sort of walking like giant robot suit for a colony of critters and creepy crawlies and whatnot, I'm all up inside and on the outside. And they're working hard, keep me healthy without even, they don't know that, of course, they're just cells, they're not thinking, they don't have any higher thought processes, but, you know, they've shaped human evolution, at least maybe partially, we're still sorting this out, this is all so new that it's like, oh, this is exciting, this is that wild west area, we can really kind of do what we want, this is an exciting thing of science, and I know that everyone is excited by niche scientific fields having an explosion in research, um, but I am, so, love, you got a passion for science and research and the, the natural world, I recommend picking up the book. I contain multitudes. I think you're really going to enjoy yourself, and it's just a great read. Even even if you're not, you know, scientifically minded, it's still a great sort of, I guess, coffee table book for you to sort of pick up, read a chapter here, read a chapter there. You're, you're going to learn something great.
I never felt like I was being lectured to, which is very important for these types of books. That's my uh, little piece about this book. I really like it, and I think you'll like it too. You can find it wherever books are sold, in, or at your local library if you, if you know what a library is. Alright, uh, that's it for this week. See you next week.